Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Wilson and today I will be going over our R5 circuit. Um, conveniently, this is our last video that I'll be making. Um, it's been a great course. Um, I loved every single thing about it. Uh, very blessed to have taken this course and I had such a great instructor, so thank you very much. Um, sorry this video is coming out a bit late, uh, but let's go ahead and start uh, right into it. So first, what we're going to do is demonstrate um, this circuit, and I'll kind of go into a little bit more detail about what it does. So first, what we're going to do here is set in a price. So we're going to head and make it five. Now, if we wanted to make just a super simple test, we could just simply enter in one penny each until we get to five. So we have one penny in the register, two pennies in the register, three pennies in the register, four pennies, and five pennies. And boom, there we go. Our vend available is open, and we are able to select a product to be vended. And then, and if we want to go ahead and set it to something like 15, we can go ahead and do that by entering five, you know, a few pennies, another nickel, and then a few pennies. And there it is, click product select, get our stuff, and then we move on. So what has changed? What has changed in this circuit compared to our last one? Well, to begin, we introduced what is called a priority encoder. And what a priority encoder is, is it takes in all four of our inputs. We have two inputs are entered at the same time and thus gives leeway into which input has the higher quantity over the other. So a quarter being our most, our highest value, our dimes being our second highest value, nickels being our third highest value, and then fourth, obviously, our pennies being our lowest value. So what does this priority encoder look like? Well, if we go ahead and take a look into this priority encoder here, I will show you guys. It's basically just made up of our simple AND and OR gates. Again, that's kind of just how every circuit is known it all starts back at the beginning with our gates um, just a simple conversion um, to kind of decide which coin has the higher presence over the other and we'll give that number to it going back to our circuit so the reason we built this encoder in comparison to just wiring everything up to an adder is simply labor cost so building this priority encoder gives us a nice kind of wrapper that we'll be able to use in our future circuits instead of wiring everything up to an adder, which in turn would give us a lot higher of a production value cost and also be a lot bigger of a time consuming device. So going back to another difference within this machine is um, the use of a lot more NOT gates. Um, and the reason we need this um, in place of the one shot that we have here, the reason we need more NOT gates is to actually add a higher propagation delay, which gives the circuit enough time to compute our values, get through that priority encoder, send it through the splitter, up through the adder, and then up into our 8-bit register here. Um, another few differences is when you're dealing with pennies, instead of so when we did quarters, dimes, and nickels in our last video, we dealt with only six state codes. Um, at five cent intervals, but now we have multiple state codes because we're now dealing with pennies, which are single units. So instead of stuff being divisible by five, everything is now divisible by itself, which in turn gives us a lot more state codes. Um, so that was definitely the biggest change out of this. Um, other than that, uh, once we were able to determine that factor that we have more state codes, we we're actually able to make use of our 8-bit adders our 8-bit registers and our 8-bit comparators, um, which in turn help us create a more simplified circuit um, with actually much more going on behind the scenes. But visually, it looks a lot nicer. Um, if we wanted to, we actually could make this a 16-bit um, register if we wanted to, but the drawbacks of that actually happening would mean that, again, we would need much more state codes and there'd be much more gates um, there'd be many more registers, a lot more adders, more comparators. And the more you do that, the more not gates you need to stop that propagation delay from happening. Basically be a very slow working vending machine. Um, as for the USA, should it still mint the penny? Um, I think not. I think that they shouldn't 
mint the penny anymore. Um, I think it's kind of a useless currency and I think kind of just adds a lot more complications to our systems. Um, as, a, as an example, vending machines, um, not dealing with pennies would actually remove a lot for in terms of the creators of the vending machines. Um, I don't really think it's used as much as it used to be back in the day now that everything is moving forward digitally. Um, so I really don't think there's a reason that the USA should still mint the penny. Um, and then finally, the advantages of uh, communicating this, these register values, we actually use hexadecimal for it. And the reason for that is because if we had to use binary, it would basically just create a really long strand of numbers that would be hard to interpret. Um, so we have a much easier time as humans uh, remembering hexadecimal um, along with um, other values like that instead of binary or just regular decimal values. Um, it helps the computer, it helps us as humans reg reg recognizing that. And yeah. And that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you.